Thank you. And uh, hello, everybody. Now I had to change the slides. And then. Okay. So my subject is data sources on environmental impacts of food. So I will give you a little bit of examples of the results, what we have done in uh, MTT. And uh, maybe I can show you some examples how to eat eco-friendly way. So every day we have a problem, what to eat. And uh, usually we choose the food according to taste, uh, health and price. But nowadays more important thing is uh, also uh, the environmental effects. People want to know how the food is produced and uh, what things uh, then have an effect to climate change and uh, also uh, animal welfare is important. So somehow we had to produce data uh, for people about these things. Uh, is organic better? Is how, how we can have an effect to uh, eutrophications, etc. So one example is, is life cycle analysis. And uh, in that way, we can look the whole production chain and uh, look every inputs and outputs and calculate uh, the carbon footprint. And uh, we get the results, which gives an idea to people uh, how it affects the climate change or how, what, what's the load to Baltic Sea when this food is produced. Uh, here's the picture of the uh, LCR thinking. So there is these every little steps, every, uh, every steps uh, in the food chain, what we had to take into account. So there is uh, transport and what is coming in and out and uh, what uh, every steps what have an effect to results. Mm. So uh, one measure we can give is the carbon dioxide equivalent. So this carbon footprint is already quite well known in uh, globally. Uh, because it's a global, the climate change and global warming is, uh, is uh, global, um, uh, we, we are worried about it. And uh, when calculating carbon dioxide equivalent, we had to take uh, all these uh, greenhouse gases account. So we, we are calculating those with uh, uh, having these, uh, uh, these uh, multiplied coefficients, uh, so we can get the total carbon load. Mm. Uh, but what is also important uh, in the area of, of Baltic Sea is, of course, the eutrophication. And uh, for it, we had to calculate the eutrophication potential, and uh, there is also all these. Uh, bad molecules we take into account in calculations. So nowadays, uh, in some products, you can find the carbon uh, footprint, uh, uh, these labels, and here is an example also what is used in uh, United Kim Kong, Kin, Kin, Kingdom and Japan and Sweden. Uh, but uh, nowadays, we don't have uh, uh, la labels for eutrophication potential, so uh, maybe in the future, after a few years, I hope we have some kind of label for that also. So what kind of data 
we need when we are calculating these environmental effects. We need all the data from field to table. So uh, in Finland, we use the ProAgria field data bank data. So we need uh, statistic, uh, statistic tables from uh, Statistics Finland. There comes input output tables. Uh, we need uh, uh, average values for how long tractor is going. Uh, we need tractor in the field, how much uh, uh, fuel it, it needs, all these things, all, all values uh, about transportation and, uh, and etc. So the ready LCI values you can find from the internet, from uh, publications, books. Here's one example of a Finnish book uh, where uh, uh, what the name is the seasonal food. Uh, and uh, there is collected uh, uh, the LCR results and calculated the, uh, there is recipes and they, uh, uh, they tell how much uh, is the carbon footprint when you are cooking this food. And the principles of LCA method you can also find uh, from the internet and uh, the protocols and procedures. And uh, about these things I think you will heard later in the session three. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> What we are doing in, in this food web project, we are collecting this LCR data for you and uh, to data bank, and then we will have a web application where you can look uh, by choosing your lunch uh, plate uh, that how much carbon dioxide or eutrophication comes. And uh, this is an example or or <laughs> how the food plate model is used uh, and how you should collect the food for it so it's uh, it uh, so so that it's healthy for you so uh, half of the plate is salad so of course you are eating like this <laughs> so let's look a little bit uh, deeply uh, this is actually my lunch yesterday so how I manage? Uh, we can look the potato. Potato uh, is was the main uh, main ingredients in rainbow trout casserole. So in LC analysis, we had to look every ingredients uh, step by step. There is uh, how what 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 has done in the field. There is the fertilizers, lime. All also how the fertilizers and lime is produced are taking into account. There is fuels harvesting, also storage, and uh, we get the results. Uh, uh, what's the environmental impact when we produced one kilo of potato? But what about my lunch plate? There is a lot of different uh, steps. Mm. So there is milk, there is bread, there is uh, margarine uh, and cream to casserole, and uh, here is the potato and fish and salad. So here is the ingredients, and also all these steps, what, what is needed that I can eat at home the lunch, and, and I, I can do it myself. So, how I manage? Oh my God, it's not a good result. It's more than mentioned meat and macaroni plate. Why is that? Because Rainbow Road is farmed fish, and the eutrophication impact of farmed fish is high. Let's look a little bit deeper. Here is carbon dioxide equivalent. Most of the carbon dioxide uh, comes from others. It was these uh, other steps, uh, not the ingredients. But the second one is the rainbow trout. But when we think about our Baltic Sea and eutrophication, 
81% comes from uh, Rainbow Road. But what about if I used catch fish? fish so, and, uh, and uh, also locally catch fish. Then the bad guy is the milk. But you had to remember that now the eutrophication impact is only a l only little from that the first one, that 3.5. Now it's only few percent. So drink your milk. It's important to get the calcium. <laughs> so things are not so black and white. Uh, here is uh, the results of uh, uh, where uh, where the most impacts are coming. So when we th think about Baltic Sea and eutrophication, the food chain is giving more than half of the eutrophication. So the food production is really important. And uh, in here we have uh, looking the ingredients and some uh, some. Uh, some where uh, 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 the ozone and acidification, climate change, and eutrophication is coming. So you can see that most eutrophication and climate change also the most important is the feed production and then the plant production. And when we look at uh, uh, the ingredients also, we can see that meat is, is the bad guy and after that milk. But now we have to remember that how this, this calculation is done because we get milk and meat from cows. How the allo allocation is uh, calculated. All this can uh, have an effect to results. So if you are looking uh, from the literature, you can find different results and there, there can be uh, differences in values. But in general, meat, milk and grain production are problems. And uh, here is a uh, scene uh, that uh, when we look beef, pork, poultry, eggs and milk, the most environmental effects come from feed raw material production. So the animal production and other activities are very low. And uh, here I have collected uh, the data what we were calculating in our feasibility study. Uh, here is uh, eutrophication indices for some raw materials in Finland. The Estonian and Latvian values are calculated based on Finnish uh, values, but uh, those values, what was available in Estonia and Latvia, like, uh, uh, like yield statistics and uh, the use of fertilized, uh, were changed, and then we found that uh, in some, some case, uh, the eutrophication intensity is more high, or some case it's lower in Estonia or Latvia. But these results, you can find all this calculation from our feasibility study, which is available in MTT internet sites. And there is also the new report made by, made by Franz Silvenius about the environmental impacts of rainbow trout product produced in Finland. So those reports are available in the internet. So what to take into account? Uh, and what, what is found? Packet food is not necessary worse uh, than unpacked. Uh, if the packets prevents the losses of food. And local global food uh, 
which one is better. Uh, so the local is better, but if uh, the aircraft is used, uh, then, then we get the high intensities. Uh, and some cases, uh, distance production uh, is, uh, is better if somewhere we can get much higher yields than in our home country. <laughs> But usually, uh, using seasonal food is very good choice to reduce environmental effects. Mm. Uh, what is uh, usually missing data when thinking about LCA? So we need more about uh, calculation of organic, conventional, this is better, this is better local or global, uh, is it fresh or preserved, uh, and uh, significance of transport and packing, uh, more calculation is needed. Uh, and uh, also catering services, uh, uh, there we need more LCA studies and uh, to calculate the logistic systems and uh, also to study the environmental effects in different countries. So what we were calculating in feasibility study, we need more results from Estonia and Lat Latvia so we can uh, calculate uh, more uh, specific results for you. Uh, what I can say uh, when we, we first of all we're thinking what to eat, uh, if we want to think about environmental effects, uh, it's better to choose more vegetarian food and also uh, choose local and seasonal vegetables and fruits. And uh, locally captured fish is always better than uh, uh, the farmed one, one. But usually people want to eat rainbow trout, so we, we like the taste of it. So <laughs> the re researchers had to find some, uh, uh, some results uh, to get the better uh, uh, feed for rainbow trout because things are not so black and white. <laughs> mm. uh, then eat less meat, use less dairy products, but most important is uh, avoid food spill, because it's, uh, from that comes huge environmental effects. We all know that in our fridges is, uh, best before is gone and we had to throw away very good food. Mm. So don't buy so much food, just buy that one you are going to eat. <laughs> and most important is eat according to the official food recommendations. Because in there usually is all these uh, use more vegetarian food. And uh, when I was talking about uh, this, uh, what kind of LCA results you can find from the internet, uh, we are in this food web project uh, helping you for that. So we are collecting these and calculating for you these uh, results and collecting these to our data bank and you can look your your uh, what you are eating and what kind of environmental effects it has from uh, in the future from our uh, website. So that was all. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. Do we have any questions about life cycle analysis of food?
Hello. It's good. Hello. Uh, my uh, name is Ene Lill and I'm asking about the milk production. Why it's equal to the meat production? Is it uh, so much the same thing about uh, the impact? Milk. Meat. Milk production. Uh, yes, yes. And uh, meat, you uh, equalize them. Yes. Uh, Sirpa, can you... Yes, in, in uh, I mean, for instance, in Finnish conditions, we normally normally have the our most our meat. I think eighty percent of the meat is coming from the from the system which is uh, I mean uh, producing uh, meat and milk at the same time. So we we, we have not separated the, the meat production from milk. Uh, so so your question was why is it uh, why is it Sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, you know, uh, actually, it is not the same. It is not. It's quite far from the same. If we think about kilo, kilo or liter of milk, so it, it uh, the carbon footprint is around uh, 1.2, uh, 1.3 kilos. Uh, um, I mean, uh, CO2 equivalent per liter milk. And uh, for for beef, for for uh, meat, it is it's uh, kind of 15, or it varies. It can be uh, in 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 uh, some context, it can be far more than than 15, uh, 20, 25 kilos CO2 equivalents per per kilo meat. Uh, so it, it's not the same. It it was perhaps uh, I mean uh, some misunderstanding if you kind of uh, interpret it to yourself that it is the same. There is a big difference. And um, when we are thinking about the, the production, so uh, about 80% when we speak about allocation, so so about 80% of the uh, of the carbon footprint of the, of the of the total production is allocated to to milk and and um, rest about 20% to the to the meat and it's simply because uh, uh, at present the 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 cows produce that much milk so so uh, i mean from the whole system it's really most of the most of the um, impact is is, is uh, allocated to milk and if you compare uh, meat from from this combined production system, or uh, I mean, uh, what they call suckle, uh, su suckle cows system, where, where uh, I mean uh, the the calves uh, only mil eat the milk or drink the milk, and we are not using the the milk for I mean human consumption. In that case, it varies very much uh, in which, ki which kind of context you, you grow the animals or you keep the animals. The, the meat uh, carbon footprint and eutrophication could be more or less the same as it is in our, in our this combined, or it, it can be changed quite a lot. In, for instance, in Brazilian, Brazilian uh, beef, it is, it is pretty high. And that again comes from the from the impact to the to the or the impact of land use and the the carbon which is which is I mean least released from from uh, from land actually. Hello, uh, I'm Pirat from Tartu University, and I was uh, wondering that uh, you said that uh, um, trans transportation um, uh, effect uh, and and, um, and it's uh, good um, if you eat food. Uh, yeah, it's like air aircraft transportation is good, and I've always <laughs> known that it's bad. So, what's the thing with this? <laughs> It was misunderstanding uh, also because, uh, of course, aircraft is, is not good. It's, it's bad. It was the bad guy <laughs> in my presentation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe so, I said so, it. So train and ship transport are better. Mm -hmm.
Thank you. Have you considered uh, what what kind of <laughs> footprint is coming with different food production? If we think milk, so we, 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 we get cheeses from milk and uh, we have a different kind of milk products as mm. well we have a different kind of meat products smoked meat half of of meat is used as smoked in finland and uh, we have all kind of marinated and uh, all kind of different products and i i think uh, we cannot be we cannot have a similar footprint actually uh, for for cheese it is quite simple because uh, one kilo cheese i mean normal normal, normal edam or emmental needs about uh, 10 liters of, of milk so so the the carbon footprint or of cheese is is 10 or a little bit above, above 10 when it is about one for a milk so it is it is actually the the most of that is coming from the basic raw material uh, for for instance marinated uh, chicken it is a, it's a, uh, i mean kind of specific thing because uh, the marination which we uh, what is used there it has it has a lower footprint than than chicken itself so if you if you buy marinated uh, meat especially marinated beef you certainly i mean uh, in terms of the of the quantity of what you buy however more you have the marination in there, <laughs> the, the, the lower is the carbon footprint or the environmental impact, actually. But it's, I mean, it, it's a little bit weird <laughs> to compare then, because uh, do you actually buy, buy it because of the, of the beef or the marination? <laughs> yeah, and we know that sometimes it's, it's a, there is a trick that increase the amount of uh, the quantity the kilos of, of uh, uh, meat is to uh, introduce some extra water into that and then and, and make it heavier and make it more beneficial to to the to the uh, trading company to sell it so in in that, that case it is it is uh, weird they are lowering the carbon footprint but <laughs> is it okay everybody can discuss about that